Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The move towards smart classrooms quicken with Raspberry Pi for STEM. St. Lucia discusses compliance with the United Nations Human Rights Convention on Discrimination Against Women. St. Lucia Carnival enters the home stretch at fever pitch. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, in collaboration with the Caribbean Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics Organization, Cari STEM, hosted a week-long series of workshops in the use of Raspberry Pi devices for science, technology, engineering and mathematics learning. The overall goal is to introduce the Raspberry Pi as a platform, as one of the means of integrating technology in the classroom. Here's Anissa Antoine. Raspberry Pi is a small yet powerful computer which can be used to perform simple programming and the basics of computer science. The secondary school students and teachers learned how to integrate the use of Raspberry Pi into different concepts. Jermaine Anthony is the curriculum specialist within the Technology Integration Department of the Ministry of Education. So this is a very important step we're taking because we want to be able to integrate more of these technologies in, in, in learning in general, but also to give young people, our students, a, a window into the future, into what the potential is for career opportunities that may lie ahead. We do know that a lot of the um, jobs, um, careers um, our young students are going to have in the next five, ten years, maybe are not even invented yet. This is an age where artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, all of these concepts are becoming more meaningful, more prevalent. And so we have to prepare our students from now uh, to take advantage of these um, opportunities as the, the world is in fact changing so rapidly. Professor Winston Seeley of Caristem is the lead facilitator of the workshops. The nice thing about the Raspberry Pi is it's a single board computer. It's inexpensive, um, roughly about 20, 25 US dollars. Um, and it captures all the essence of a computer. Um, traditional computers are proprietary in nature, in nature excuse me. Um, so it's difficult to capture some of the ports and design stuff around it. With the Raspberry Pi, it's open. Uh, we could design prototypes, uh, we could build on them, we could experiment, etc. Dr. Nicholas St. Hill explained that Caristem is a platform for persons and organizations interested in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, within the Caribbean. Well, Caristem is mainly about inspiring people, inspiring students and adults, actually, to let them know that they can solve problems. That's primarily our objective, actually, as an organization. We want them to know that they can play. And there is no right and wrong answer in general in engineering and science. That's, that's the goal. Dr. St. Hill expressed his excitement to be able to continuously collaborate with the government of St. Lucia. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. A wide cross-section of St. Lucia's law enforcement and social support agencies recently discussed St. Lucia's compliance with the United Nations Human Rights Convention. The forum was hosted by the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations in collaboration with the Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights in Barbados. The focus was the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. In 1982, St. Lucia ratified the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination of Women, which takes an important place in bringing the female half of humanity into the focus of human rights concerns. The implementation of the convention is monitored by the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, CEDAW. At least every four years, countries that have signed on to the convention are expected to submit a national report to the committee, indicating the measures they have adopted to give effect to the provisions of the convention. A workshop was held in preparation for these reports and was facilitated by the Human Rights Officer with the United Nations, Michelle Brathwaite. Every single Caribbean country has ratified a number of human rights tra treaties and there are a certain number of obligations and responsibilities that come with ratifying a treaty. But small island developing states 
have challenges when it comes to meeting those obligations. So part of my role is to help governments meet those challenges. So over the course of the next three days, I'll be working with gender relations to pull together information uh, for your CEDAW report, the report going to the committee uh, against the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women. Um, what is most important, in order to get, pull this report together, information from you is critical. Acting Director of the Department of Gender Relations says St. Lucia submitted its first to six reports in 2015 and is in the process of submitting its seventh to ninth reports. So we are hoping that by the end of today, you'd have a greater appreciation for the human rights um, component of the job that you do, how what you do contributes to the commitments that St. Lucia has made and how you are supposed to be generating information, collecting data that contribute to the reports. You will also, hopefully, you will also get an understanding and appreciation of the value that the preparation of those reports add to the work that we do, and more so to the beneficiaries of the work that we do. So at the end of the day, if the reports can give us the necessary feedback that will allow us to make the to implement programs and projects and initiatives that could better the lives of the people that we serve, then we would have served the purpose of actually completing those reports. During its annual session, the committee members discuss these reports with the government representatives and explore with them areas of further actions by the specific country. The committee also makes general recommendations on matters concerning the elimination of discrimination against women. CARICOM Chairman St. Lucia's Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney will in the coming weeks set pace as the region prepares to engage the global community in September at the United Nations on matters of climate change and resilience building. Caribbean leaders will tackle, among other issues, special financial provisions for countries in times of disaster. Considerable stride has already been made in the OECS subregion in that regard. Janelle Norville has the details. As the region continues efforts to build resilience, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, has made significant strides in that regard. Speaking on the program ECCB Connects, ECCB Governor Timothy Antoine highlighted the importance of building disaster resilience at various levels so as to include fiscal resilience. The governor indicated that the bank has been advocating for the embedding of disaster link clauses in sovereign debt contracts. He explained the benefits of this action. We have been advocating internationally, we mean in the ECCB, that all debt contracts for small countries, including small states, including those in the ECCU, ought to have in their, in their contract a clause which says if there's a shock, if there's a hurricane, for example, or a major shock, that there will be a standstill on payments to give the country that is impacted the liquidity it needs to begin its recovery in the shortest possible time and then to resume the payment at a later date. And that date is specified, whether it's one year later, two years later, three years later. The initiative, according to the governor, in 2014-2015 was pioneered in Grenada. Antoine stated that the ECCB has already contacted several international entities seeking buy-in. He noted that the next step is widespread adoption, especially by small island states. Through the Paris Club Forum, we made an, a strong advocacy. Canada, uh, as our G7 member, came along and was very supportive, and we commend Canada for that. Canada used its good offices, and we wrote, we, ECCB, wrote to the IMF and World Bank, both the managing director and the president of the World Bank, asking them to work with us on this particular issue. They accepted the challenge, worked with us, and with the International Capital Markets Association, came up with a term sheet that can be used in all debt contracts. That's a big advance. The ECCB has also written to the Paris Club, urging the club to take the necessary steps for the automation of the embedding of disaster links within sovereign contracts. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. 
Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castry City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome, everyone. It's the weekend, and I'm Ryan O'Brien with your weekend edition from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. Director of Sports Patrick Matra says St. Lucia is getting ready to face the challenges of the other Windward Islands when they participate in this year's Windward Islands school games set for Dominica at month end. The St. Lucia contingent will soon be going into camp before leaving for the annual games. The preparations for the games are moving quite smoothly. Um, only this week we had a meeting, a discussion where the team was chosen. So we already have our 62 persons who, are, are the, the, who would be the team traveling to Dominica to represent the country. Um, sometime next week, um, after the, the carnival season, of course, you know, everything gets lost in the carnival season, that we will be having uh, what our training camp um, down in Viewfort at Binfield where the 62 members of the delegation will be going down together with the coaches to go through the final preparations and more importantly the psychological preparation, getting them ready to go out and represent the country. So based on what we, we have done so far, we're very satisfied with what we have. Um, we see our chances as being um, good to excellent in terms of, of coming up on top. Um, of course, like, like, like persons always say, you, you win the goal, um, you don't win a silver. So we're going all for gold to win that, that particular goal this year and to do well. But so far, things have been going quite smoothly. Coaches of the various disciplines will be using the upcoming camp to fine-tune their athletes for competition. The Youth Empowerment Project, YEP, is continuing here now that a logo has been formally established. Project coordinator Joan Husbands tells the NTN Nightly that the time has come to expand on the scope of the project. The project implementation unit is happy to finally have a logo which is representative of empowerment to the youth and the communities of Wilton's Yard, New Village, Conway and Barnard Hill. We launched our logo and the prize giving ceremony was also on the same date which was July 8th on Monday. Uh, the winner of the logo competition or design um, competition was that of Kerry Andre from Conway. He provided us with this wonderful logo in our background and we're happy to, to finally have launched. Currently, moving on, the next steps for the project is that of um, ensuring that we get our key staff on board or our core staff on board for the, the program components. Um, we, are, we will be re-advertising some of the positions. Um, some of the positions we didn't get the minimum um, expressions of interest for. So please stay tuned for um, those advertisements or re-advertisements on the government website, the CDB website. And um, we look forward to persons who have the desired skill sets and um, qualifications to add value to our programming. Um, to apply, we encourage you to apply. Don't be discouraged by the criteria. Um, please ensure that you submit your, 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 um, your application. All applications are welcome. The project is working under the theme, Enlighten, Enrich, Empower. And that's where we come to the end of your segment from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly for this week. I'm Ryan O'Brien saying goodbye and have a pleasant and safe weekend. Thanks, Ryan. St. Lucia's Carnival enters the home stretch at Fever Pitch, beginning with Panorama Friday evening. On Thursday night, Tribe of Twelve showed its dominance on the carnival landscape, capturing the 2019 National King and Queen of the Band's title. The results for the Queen of the Bands are 4th place with 374 points, Nicole St. Helen, Azari Tribe, 3rd place with 395 points, Claudine Cadet, Tribe of 12, 2nd place with 430 points, Natania St. Omer, Zuvo Carnival Band, and 1st place with 456 points, Sharon Tanner from Tribe of 12. 
The results for Kings of the Bands are fourth place with 426 points, Barry George Fusion Mass, third place with 427 points, Quincy Griffith, Tribe of Twelve, second place with 452 points, Martin Dorville from Tribe of Twelve, and first place with 456 points, Adrian Auger from Tribe of Twelve. An Afro Lucian adventure. This costume is entitled The Spirit Crossed Triumphantly Below, played by Adrian Auger. 300 years, 12 million Africans shipped as cargo. Garbed in green, the color of this island, and gold, the color of our dreams, we have learned to dance again to celebrate our survival, to see ourselves as our own reluctant heroes. She was not named by Spaniards, but by Amerindians who found her, Twin Peaks, shining in that first dawn, signaling the end of their long and lonely journey. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. La main pop se chime bon santé. Y absolument nécessaire pour laver la main si vous voulez tienne bon santé. Quand même si vous pas gloss si tienne, ou ça fait ces bagages là. Coutez. Laver la main souvent et puis glos net avec savon après condition qui ca si main vermine. Par exemple on ne peut laver la main après vous changer d'ailleurs pas. C'est vite pour vite. Vous tuez les gens qui blessent et bien malades. Après vous tuez les animaux et après vous entamez les ordres. Et si vous n'avez pas de glos, vous avez servi de sa yoka kouye, hand sanitizer et bien alcool pour 30 secondes. Lavez la main souvent. Ça c'est une manière pour empêcher les maladies. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, priez le bureau d'information santé à numéro 468-5349. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur Tan Nisha, Monsieur Madame, Département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement cette ci à ce moment Télévision Nationale pays NTN, Capesoto, Nouvelle en Creole, Présidente Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement cette ci a avancé effort pour moderniser manière l'école Capesoté Lissoyo et que manière nouveau pour instruire les étudiants. Plan à présent, c'est pour avancer attention, sortir à sous les instituteurs pour les étudiants. C'est le ministre de l'Éducation qui fait un annoncement du montant qui a informé les journalistes concernant ce qui est passé à la cabinet. On a Dr. Gail Rigobert déclaré que le ministère de l'Éducation a pris plusieurs initiatives en considération si j'ai qui spécialisé particulièrement à l'école première, c'est ici. Selon le Dr. Rigobot, présentement, l'année un projet qui a couru à cette école et que ça a justifié pour la spécialisation si j'ai l'école première. Dr. Rigobot remarque que ce n'est pas tout petit à l'école qui est capable pour délivrer cette sujet à dégoué l'école première. Et que c'est pour raison il est nécessaire pour établir la spécialisation de cette sujet à cette école. Il y a un centre d'excellence en sport et en culture qui est aussi pour tuer une façon à part de ça qui est traditionnel pour les étudiants réaliser les capacités, yo, pas de yo continuer pour trouver yo, un haut degré d'éducation de secondaire. Le ministre de l'Éducation a aussi annoncé que l'école secondaire à Gozile, qui est opérée à présent, qui est l'Académie nationale de sport, et qui est aussi ouvert officiellement en mois de septembre l'année 2019. Dr. Rigobert a ajouté que l'arrangement est en place pour employer les spécialistes de sport et que l'autre sujet, comme nous, ici, à faire physique, à parmi ces sujets qui ont été étudiés, à bien ont été instruits. On a appris que dire aussi ces instituteurs ont été trouvés l'occasion pour renforcer les habiletés et qui délivrer et déclarer que les instituteurs ont continué à recevoir 
face pour continuer l'éducation et le suivre ça. Là, il y a un arrangement et puis un bac de développement à Caribla avec l'autre agence qui va supporter ces instituteurs pour suivre le programme de l'étude. Les étudiants en Wet Castry, j'ai trouvé étonnement en façon pour agir et puis adresser la situation des as. Ça c'est parce que le ministère de l'Éducation a organisé un programme pour une habilité pour réduire à ce risque qui est cause par des as naturels. Ces étudiants qui étaient à l'âge 8 ans pour 10 ans sortis en plusieurs Wet Castry. Ces étudiants ont trouvé étonnement à ce moment pour assister. Si yon moun blessé, eh bien, si yon moun trouvé malade de yon des as. Yon aussi te trouvé l'occasion pour visiter l'établissement NIMO pour demander organisation à car conduit opération. Officier de recherche en ministère de l'éducation, Lindy Eriste, expliquait que c'était yon l'occasion pour ces étudiants opérer à l'école yon comme yon ambassade, particulièrement à l'ingé des as et pour aussi la famille yon et aussi la commune qui yon a resté. Selon Eriste, ça a fait yon plus capable pour sauver la vie et propriétaire du royaume des as et pour aussi bâtir une résilience pour des as naturels. Le ministre de l'Éducation aussi collaboré et puis le département les propriétaires pour indiquer cette idée concernant les divers problèmes qui diffèrent. Ça l'occasionne de lancer l'institut à l'école Tifi à Castri. Ça c'est Ave Maria, Madame Brenda St. Helen, déclaré que vous avez vu cette étude à l'école des as qui sont même cas une cause et ça qui est naturel. Yo kaisa plus sensible pour ces divers des as et par conséquent instruit l'autre étudiant et commune aussi. Programme pour instruire à ce manière pour réduire à ce risque des as qui commence lundi le 8 juillet et bout mercredi le 10 juillet l'année ici. Autorité des affaires touristiques a cette ici, a cette compagnie qui est responsable pour ménager et guider divers spectacles en pays, Kako Pouye et Caribbean Airlines, ça c'est Avion Caribla. Pour tenir une cérémonie pour bienvenir les passagers au rejoint pour expliquer ce carnaval à cette place. Officier des affaires La Place à Events Company, Lily Williams, note que ça c'est la deuxième année que Caribbean Airlines a opéré un avion officiel pour carnaval à cette place. Cérémonie à bienvenir les passagers Hot Caribbean Airlines et aussi Liat pour expliquer ce l'esprit carnaval à cette place. Plan c'est pour faire ces étrangers en rejoint qui a visité pour carnaval, ni en tant qui très excité pour ça changer et pour encourager pour vivre l'année prochaine. Si on a été pris pour mercredi, le 11 juillet 2019. Et ce que ça nous a trouvé pour une nouvelle pour aujourd'hui, je vous remercie autant pour ce qu'il y a de l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour ce qu'il y a de l'invitation. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez posé une autre nouvelle à Créole. Je vous souhaite à tout le monde un bon carnaval, un respect, une connecté sans pièce de désagrément. À présent, je vous remercie pour ce qu'il y a de l'invitation. Merci on Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Generally cloudy skies with some scattered showers, some of which may be moderate to heavy and isolated thunderstorms. Residents in areas prone to landslides and flooding are asked to remain vigilant. A tropical wave is expected to produce scattered, moderate to heavy showers and isolated thunderstorms, mainly over the southern half of the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. Another tropical wave associated with an area of low pressure is located over the central tropical Atlantic moving westward at about 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. This wave has a low chance of developing into a tropical cyclone during the next five days. The tide for Castries is low at present. The tide for VFO Bay was high at 2.35 p.m. and will be low again at 7.12 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.42 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles. <laughs>